We will now move on to the next part of our program, which is the reason why many of us are here this evening, uh, to understand how this future world is going to shape up. And more importantly today, how uh, drones are likely going to influence our business operations and make our business operations better. And to present our masterclass this evening, we have PSC Anandel, who is a serial entrepreneur. PSC founded Digimag, digimag.co.za, and sold the company, and now owns a photography and video company and founded a drones company, which he recently sold to Proconix. The drones business sale condition required PSCA to work for Proconix to grow the drones business. And PSCA is currently heading the drones business for Proconix. Uh, PSCA, it's such a privilege to have you with us this evening. And we're very Thank excited you. to learn about how drones can influence business. I've only seen those drones that take photos and everything. And when I heard that they could influence our business operation, it really intrigued me. And so every one of us are excited to hear what you have to share with us. So it's over to you uh, to share with us how drones are going to influence or are influencing our business operations. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, I, I'm not going to make this a normal keynote uh, presentation. I'll rather have this be more of a conversation with you and, and, and the other participants. So if you have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to, to chip in at any time because I'm not sure how much you guys really know. So I don't want to bore you too much with certain details and then maybe steer this conversation in the wrong direction. But I'll, 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 I'll look at the email that Erica sent me as, as a guideline to how it would like me to, to, to do this talk with you guys. Can everyone hear me? Is that fine, my connection okay? Yes, you're very 100%. clear. Okay. All right, so he, he asked me to start off with how um, I started the business and, 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 and the journey towards it. So um, I actually started off as a youth worker at a church um, in 2008. And then um, was introduced to a, a book called The Secret, which has certain principles attached to it. Um, and, and I have to be honest, in the beginning, I thought this was nonsense. How could this be true? Um, but what led me to, to experiment in this is because sometimes in life, if, if you run out of options, you try new things, even things that you might think might be a little bit less than, than comfortable to experience with. So, um, I, 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 after my back up, I had serious issues with my left leg where I lost control of my leg. So at the age, I think of 24, I was walking with a cane because at certain stages, uh, because of the damage on my vertebrae, my leg wouldn't work properly. And uh, I was on, on uh, hands full of medicine every day to, 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 to help counter the pain and the effects of, of this operation. So a friend of mine came, he said to me, look, uh, um, he sees what I'm going through, but he would like me to introduce me to these principles. And I started practicing it. And within two weeks, two weeks, I was healed. No more pain medicine. Use of my leg was 100% back again. And I thought to myself, yo, as someone who's, who's not earning a lot of money, who's barely making it every month, maybe I should try these principles with my finances. Because I saw this one guy, Jack Canfield, I think his name is, he wrote a book called Chicken Soup for the Soul. He, he took a $1 bill, wrote six zeros next to it, stuck it to the roof of, 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 of his uh, bedroom. And every morning he, you'll see that. And then you'll just imagine what it would be like to have a million bucks. So I thought to myself, okay, I'll start off small and I'll do this with 50 rands. And I got 50,000 rand. So I took a 50 rand note, put it in my car's visor. And every morning I would look at that and I will visualize. Um, within, I think a month and a half, People from a business contacted me, said, um, we hear you do videos. We had an incident at one of the mines. Can you please create a safety video for us? And I said, okay, sure, I can do this. But I said to them, I'm not, I don't want to sound out of place, but how do I quote this? How do I, how do I go about? And she said, well, look, we, we've, we've looked at some of the other businesses and they quote anything between 50 to 100,000 rand basically for this, this kind of job. So if you can come in somewhere in between, then I'm pretty sure you, you'll be spot on. And I quoted him 57,000 rand. 
And I can remember when that SMS from APSA came through, I almost uh, fell on my back because that was my entire year's salary that I got in one job. At the same time, I was applying, applying for outdoor advertising rights at the local municipality for lampposts. And this has been a five year process uh, with no luck, luck and a lot of frustration. And then uh, I think it was about a month after receiving that, 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 that deposit in my account, the municipality calls me and they say, we, um, we have good news for you. The contract is ready. If you come and sign it, it's yours. And I went there to sign and then they said, okay, but on one condition, the municipal manager said, you need to put up a hundred of these boards within the next two months or else you forfeit your rights because they've had many people who, who say they'll, they'll take on this contract, but they never delivered. And the amount for those hundred boards were about 50,000 Rand. If I did not have the 50,000 Rand, I would not be able to put up the hundred boards. And as I say, the rest was history. So from there, I had Digimat for about nine years, uh, was a great company, and then got an offer I couldn't resist, sold the company, started Digipress, which was more of a online business, and that started me into drones. We started off with um, taking videos and 3D models for, for um, real estate agents, but Almost a year with, with uh, going into the business, we, we um, had, had legislation step in and the CAA said, well, if you want to do drones, you're going to need a license and an operator certificate. We decided we're going to do that, started the process and three years later down the line, got another offer from a company called Celeria. So that's kind of how I got started, my journey into business, into drones. And why drones and why is it important? So, for instance, with, with the company that finally uh, purchased Celeria from me, they are a um, surveying company. Now, for most of you who are, 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 who are um, familiar with, with, with surveying and who have worked on, on brownfield type of projects, you know, it's usually guys walking around with little sticks. And they, they measure out the site. And if you have a site of about three or 400 hectares, you're looking at two or three days that that surveyor will be on site. And also walking between big machines. So he's putting himself in dangerous, dangerous way. A drone takes about two hours to do the exact same job. After the drone has flown, depending on what software you use, within six hours, you'll have a 3D model of that entire site, which you can measure out within small sections of, I'm talking about centimeters in accuracy. So if you fly at 120 meters altitude, your accuracy is within three centimeter. So I thought to myself, yo, th this is a brilliant product. What, what else can we do with this? Then we got into contact with uh, a company called DuPont. They've recently been acquired by um, Cortiva. So they develop seed, seeds for the farmers. They have a Panar and Pioneer seed. So we spoke to them, uh, got into a partnership, so is still in partnership with them. And when in the past you will have, let's say 40 or 50 people walking in a field, counting the little seedlings, all of a sudden you, you have a drone that can fly the exact same area within an hour, maybe two hours, and it counts the little seedlings. But not just that, it also measures the plant health of each one of those plants, because you have a camera on it that they call an NDVI camera. And that measures basically, it takes a photograph of the chlorophyll inside the plant. So now you can see which cultivars are under stress and which ones are not. And you do this across the entire country at all the test farms to do the same accurate measurement, but you're eliminating human error. The question I get asked very often when I tell the story is, but aren't drones gonna take our jobs? If, if it's so effective and you could replace so many people in, in a field, what's going to happen to, to people at the end of the day? And I'm pretty sure this is the same question a lot of people asked when the motor vehicle came into place, right? Before that, we had horses. So what would happen to all the blacksmiths? But since cars became a regular part of our daily life, you have people who only make tires now. You only have people who make magrams. You have mechanics. You have people who make a living out of just creating fuel for those vehicles. Since starting with, with drones, I, I've, in, in the company, it's an area that I, that, that, that I sold, we employed 22 people just to help us with the processes. 
You had people who were just specialized in uh, the maintenance of the drone, other people in writing software, certain people just in the compliance part. So the options are so much more, but where I really see the advantage of this, at this stage, we are looking at drones through, through, through the glasses of gathering information and then analyzing it. But I think our next big move would be not just from gathering information and analyzing it, but from actually uh, performing certain tasks, especially high risk tasks. We, we went to China three years ago to have a look at crop dusting drones. So currently when you do uh, apply pesticides to your field, you have a tractor with, 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 with a machine on it that puts down about 100 to 150 liters of, of liquid per hectare onto your field. And that could be anything from pesticide to fertilizer. With a drone, now remember 100 to 150 liters, a drone puts down seven to 10 liters per hectare. And when you put them in what they call a swarm, it can do it way, way faster than any tractor that you can get out there. But now here's the big advantage. That thing can work right through the day. So it's not just in the daytime, it's also in the evening because it's got sensors right around it and works with, with um, GPS and satellite technology. And uh, of course, LIDAR as well. So you have a very high precision drone that takes people out of the way of harm. I have seen farmers in our area who have become very ill and some people have, have picked up cancers because of the pesticides they've been working with all their lives. You're taking people out of those environments. The other thing that I, I, I want to talk about is if you were to work at a refinery like a Sassel or an Astron or wherever, a lot of times you need to inspect assets, anything from a flare to a tank. But before you can do that, you need to hire a crane. You need to take that asset out of operation. And it's a whole process. And there are a lot of safety boxes you need to tick and it's very costly. Currently, we don't even have to switch off a flare to inspect it now. You send a drone to that flare within a four meter distance, just under the heat wave. That camera zooms in about 200 times. With that thermal image, you can measure the heat within half a degree Celsius of, um, of accuracy. And you can do those inspections on the little tips. While you're doing that, you're building a 3D model of this very same flare. So after your inspection, you don't just have pretty photos, but you have a complete 3D model of the entire structure. It's even moving further than that now. Currently at Proconics, they are writing artificial intelligence programs to recognize certain um, anomalies. So if the drone were to fly over a tank or over a road for a couple of times, you'll tell it, this is what normal looks like. This is a crack, this is an anomaly, this is wrong. The next time it flies, it, it tags those uh, anomalies, the, the mistakes in your plant, the faults, the things you don't want there. And automatically um, it can create job cards now for some of these guys. So if you want to do yourself a favor, go and look at some of the DJI um, YouTube channels on anomaly recognition that's done through AI. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm talking a lot right now and I'm not getting much feedback. So are there any questions or anything anybody would like to know or, or, or ask about drone technology? Well, I'm just, I'll just say for now, I'm very excited. I know food security has been a big issue in the world. And with world population expected to increase, I'm actually so excited that there's probably a chance that uh, drone and uh, drone technology and artificial intelligence will probably cover that gap and no one will have to go to. Mr. MC and uh, PSCA, it's Eric. I just want to find out, I mean, is there a possibility of us seeing drones being applied to deliver pizza, uh, you know, delivering <laughs> our day to day, yes. you know, with COVID, for example, people are not, uh, they are, they are not too keen to go out and buy um, consumables. Do, do we see a future in that direction? And also, um, also a passion of, of yours in terms of drones application in security, like, uh, you know, for reaction, etc. Yes. Absolutely, Eric. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, deliveries are very possible. They're already experimenting with it in some countries. The, the only holdback is legislation. That's it. But as far as safety goes, um, I haven't heard of one drone killing anyone yet. 
um, apart from military drones. But uh, I think it's Ghana. And again, you're welcome to Google this. They are delivering blood to, to um, blood and a very essential uh, medicine to people 150 kilometers away from the home base. So where vehicles can't get, they send the drone over there, it delivers the package and it returns automatically right back to where, where it took off without any incident, without any human intervention, very, very quick. So can you imagine this picture for one moment? You're on an accident, let's say on the N1 or N17, somewhere where it's isolated. Mm -hmm. Now you're waiting for ambulance. I can send a drone to you within minutes with a uh, CPR type of kit that can at, at least help you revive the guy, keep him alive uh, or to stop the bleeding um, or to revive that person while somebody's talking to you in your ear and you have the equipment there. Um, if it comes to uh, security wise, if, if you had to look at uh, any kind, like the guys with, who, who are transporting our money, if you had a drone following that person all the time, the, the chances of that, that, that truck getting hijacked is a lot less likely because how are you gonna run away from something that can follow thermal signatures? Something mm -hmm. that can do facial recognition a big dream of mine is, and I don't think it's that far-fetched, is medicine that you get. So you're, you're a diabetic or you're somebody getting medicine chronically. That drone can come to your house. Your phone already works on this technology. So looking at the screen, it does facial recognition before it unlocks your screen. That drone can park on your lawn, see your face, say, okay, this is PSE or this is Eric. Unlock the little box, drop your medicine there and take off again. Imagine a world like that. Um, there are so many things that are, are, are excite that excite me about this technology. I, my wife always says that she, she, if she looks at these old buildings, she thinks that she, she would have been better off if she lived in the past. Me, I think I would have been better off if I lived 50 years into the future because I'm so excited about what's to come. And, and the advances that mankind is making currently, it's, it's crazy. And, and, and one last thing I just want to say about how quickly this is evolving. Five years ago, when we just got into this, the furthest the drone could fly was 1.2 kilometers. And the camera technology on wasn't great. Right now, your, your basic entry drone can do nine kilometers. And instead of just staying 12 minutes in the air, it does 55 minutes in the air within a five, five years uh, time span. I'm incredibly excited to see what's, what, what's, what's ahead in the next five to 10 years. Wow, wow. Naledi says in the chat box, we're still here, inspired and learning a lot. And I see Andrea is unmuted, she's ready to contribute. Andrea, please. Sorry, please. yes, I wanted to ask you, uh, on reflection and investigation of some of the drones, I see it's quite frightening. How do we make it more cost effective for people to be able to adopt it? I mean. Europe and a lot of uh, international markets use South Africa as a test market. For example, when it yeah. comes to cell phones and things like that, we are a test market for the USA, Europe, and Asia, okay? Because of the fact of our dynamics. So do they use us in the same environment? Or, can, or how do we access drones that are affordable for us moving forward in the future? Well, let me first ask you this. Um, how much do you think a drone costs? One, it can do surveying and both 3D models. How much do you think they cost? I'm clueless, absolutely no idea. Okay, I'm gonna give you a really good idea. So surveyors usually have these really expensive GPSs and I don't know what they call it, little thing, but it, it looks like a little wand that the surveyor will walk around with. That GPS alone is about 700,000 Rand. And again, you're paying for someone for three days on a site of about 400 hectares. I can replace that guy, and I'm saying replace, not really replace, take him out of danger's way, right? Or harm's way, with a drone of 350,000 Rand that also has a base station that can cover that exact um, uh, same as amount of space within a couple of hours instead of days. And again, you don't have a guy walking in a site where there are heavy uh, vehicles moving around. We had a case a while ago where, and, and, and this was negligence from, from, from the blaster site, but on an open cast mine, they put in um, dynamite, then they detonated. But some of those uh, dynamite 
pieces, I don't know what you, you call them, plastic explosives, didn't go off. And no one said a thing about it. So in the past, a surveyor would have walked between those and we would have measured it out, right? Luckily, our guy was flying. While he was flying, for some reason, don't know why, that thing detonated. And it, it blew one of those LDVs right onto its roof. Now, if, if Nantes, the surveyor, was on site, he would have been dead. So again, what value do you place on a life? That's the one thing. The other thing is, where I'm also seeing this technology headed is that a drone is a remotely piloted aircraft. You can literally sit in South Africa with the right software. I can control that thing in Brazil, in America, and in Australia. And that's where I really see a big advantage for South Africans because we, we are problem solvers. We are a clever bunch, in my opinion. And with the RAND being where it is right now, there's no one in America, no one in, in Australia that can, can compete with us. So again, if you have to take the, the price of the technology versus the price of putting people there on site, it's not that expensive, especially if you need, need to take into consideration the kind of equipment you're currently using. Just as another example, um, I don't know what you call it in English, but, but it's, it's, it, it, it applies the pesticide to the plant. In Afrikaans, it's called the Wichlup Spite. It's a thing you put on a tractor. So to buy one of those is three and a half million rand. And um, my, my father-in-law, they, they plant maize and soya. And they can do about 200 hectares on a really good day. Those drones, if I buy five of them, they are 200,000 rand each. That's a million rand investment. Can do exactly the same job when you swarm them together. And again, without putting people in harm's way and using a lot less pesticide, and you don't have any compaction in your soil. So the long-term benefit of having a drone, it, it outweighs anything else, um, in my opinion, at this, uh, at this stage. Oh, and, and the other thing is that I just want to mention is we're doing a lot of tank inspections currently for like Sassel and Astron. In the past, you would have had to build um, scaffolding. So they did a, 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 a price analysis. Scaffold around one of those tanks, I think the past was 5.7 million rand to put the scaffold right around, just to do an inspection, right? Right now, instead of covering that entire tank with scaffolding, they just built those small scaffolds on the wheel, uh, on wheels. So now you send a drone right around it. It creates a 3D model, high, high definition. Now you can see the anomalies because it also does it in, uh, with thermal. Uh, if I could have shared my screen, I would have showed it to you, but the thermal camera is so sensitive. You see the product level of the tank on the inside and the ash and the blanketing gas. So you see right through the tank. So you can all of a sudden not just determine how much uh, product is inside your tank, you can also see a deterioration and corrosion that you can detect with it now. So the, the cost benefit is huge, huge. So my next question to you would be, as an entrepreneur, if I'm looking at an opportunity and I want to get into the drone business, but I don't, for example, have a million rand to buy five drones, how do I, you know, like there are, for example, investment clubs where you can go and like property investment clubs where you can, I think it's called like legacy or something like that, where you can four or five of you put together a stock file and then you go buy a property. Can I take my money and invest in a drone with somebody else or in a company? Are there companies like that where you could buy into a drone, uh, a specific kind of drone, where you can then get a, a, a good return on your investment? Is there something oh, yes. like that in the market? Absolutely, there are quite a few companies. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I know of one specifically now. So, and that's exactly what happened to me with my story because um, the, the barrier to entry in these markets are very high. So all the qualifications and the boxes you need to tick, you're looking at about 87 uh, boxes and that's anything from qualifications to licensing. Uh, it's a whole lot of regulation, right? And usually what happens is you get someone who has the guts and the determination to push this thing through and get the company legal. But unfortunately in South Africa, then after that, like what happened with us at Celeria, you start to kind of run out of funds. And that's where people who have money to invest come in. And it's a really good marriage to have those two together. So after selling Celeria, I bought another company called CAS, Compact Aerial Services. And while busy buying it, Proconics came to me and said, uh, we would like to buy that company from you, 
but we have a certain few conditions, uh, one of them being me being involved there. So there are a lot of opportunities like that out there. Um, and drones are not going away. I can promise you that. It's going to become more and more relevant. And getting in now is a really good time. I, I kind of feel like this is where people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were 30 years ago when computers just became relevant. They could see the possibilities. They could see further ahead by the needed investors. And there are quite a couple of companies like that out there. Thank you. Sure. So would you be able to, to for example, for those that are interested in, be, in, in getting a, a, owning shares in a small business like this, giving us an idea of reliable companies or, or companies that we could possibly look at? Yes, they, they, there's one that I know that's currently looking for investment that I can, can give the details to you guys. I you can send me an email or, or WhatsApp me. I'll, I'll send you the details. Definitely, I can. Uh, it's a good market to get in, but I would also advise um, not just to look at drones, but also to look at the software backing the drones because there's a lot of potential in that. Um, gathering the information is one part of it, right? It's like giving you a really good... Uh, shifting or a spanner but if you don't have a competent guy swinging that spanner and knowing how to apply it it, it it's a, just a blunt instrument so um, th there's a company called drone deploy and it's kind of sad but it was developed by south africans and they moved overseas and the taxes are now going to the usa instead of coming to south africa because the climate over here they couldn't get investors so the guy's name is John Amur, but Drone Deploy, it's one of the biggest drone uh, software companies in the world now. Yeah, it's definitely something to look at. All right, and if you had a youngster, for example, like I've got a 20 year old in my house and he's looking yeah. at career opportunities. If he was looking at the, the drone going into that kind of capacity, what sort of stuff would he be learning to go into either the software side or the drone development side? What would he be, what would you recommend? Okay, so you need a pilot's license, but not a manned pilot's license, not, not a PPL. They call it an RPL. So just, just a bit of background. In South Africa, we don't, don't, don't talk about um, unmanned aerial vehicles or about drones. You're not allowed to say that over here. You, you say RPAS. It's remotely piloted aircraft systems. So it's an RPAS pilot's license, RPL. Now, what makes this very exciting, if, if you're a youngster getting into it, is that for about 35,000 rand, you can become a drone pilot and you can fly for a company. And you earn way more than a regular pilot. We have pilots, well, not just pilots, we have instructors, guys who are instructing other people to become manned aircraft pilots while working for Celeria at a much better salary than they would have earned flying in, the, in, in, in normal airspace circumstances. And now look at the whole thing of the lockdown, right? Airspace is dead in South Africa. No one is allowed to fly. They're starting to open it up little by little now, but the drones were not stopped at all because again, it's social distancing by nature. You don't need someone on the plant. That drone can still go in there, collect the necessary um, data, create a very, very accurate 3D model. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely the way to go. And, and if somebody comes to me and says, uh, I want to become a pilot, I'll say, my advice to you is, if you want to become a pilot because you want to experience flying, and do it for that reason, all right? Because you want to do it. But if you want to do it as a living, I'd rather say go the, the, the route of, of drones. Because even if you look at companies like Boeing, they, they, they are experimenting more and more steering pilots, uh, steering airplanes from the ground. Mm -hmm. So most of, of your aircraft in the air taking off and, and, and landing itself, most of it's done by computers in any way now. So mm -hmm. they're looking at taking people out of the equation more and more. So I reckon, not, not, not too far in the future, you might have an actual person sitting there, but he will be the backup. He won't be the main pilot anymore. So that's the way it's, it's moving right now, yeah. Okay. And where can, that, are there drone schools in South Africa where you learn? Is there a specific place? Yes, yes, there are a few. One of them is Pro Wings. So that's in the Gauteng area. And the mm -hmm. other one is uh, Arpas University. I think it's the name for the one in the Cape Town area, but there are a few. Uh, South Africa is the strictest um, in the world, and we were the first country in the world to, to legislate drones and to develop um, rules and, and, and laws around it. So um, if you can get a license over here, you'll get it anywhere. I can promise you that. And, and the, the, the quality of pilots we are training in South Africa is of a very, very high standard. 
Um, if you look at a place like the US, you don't even need a pilot's license. You do like a silly little online course. With us, it's, it's, a, it's, it's about a month. And, and there are a lot of other qualifications, police clearances that you have to go through before they will actually give you the go ahead to say, okay, you're allowed to become a pilot. Okay. Oh, thank you. Wow. One thing I've learned about the future is that there's nothing like a stupid question. In fact, you know, it's your imagination. And my lady is here on the chat, on the chat box says, other than farming, which other market in South Africa is growing or likely to lead? drones uh, yeah again no stupid questions any stupid answers right so uh, I think one of our biggest challenges and with any challenge comes comes opportunity I think is security and it, it kind of amazes me that I haven't seen um, your smaller security companies taking advantage of this technology so currently you have uh, like a Sassel and a Mittel that they they now use drones to 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 to, to look at the perimeters of, 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 of their factories Again, because you have thermal on it. So you can lie behind a bush. You won't hide from me. I can see your body signature lying there. So can you imagine now, if, if you had a small security company like where we come from, Zakuna, called Triple S, Zakuna Security Services, they have 10 of those Nissan Buckies. Every year, I know the owner personally, he writes off at least three of those Buckies because the guys are going at high speeds around corners and then they roll the car. His, his expenses on fuel is something crazy. And now you're not even talking about insurance every month. Now a drone can do that exact job. I did a calculation for them. If you were in the middle of Secunda and the furthest end of Secunda as the crow flies is seven kilometers. With a car, it's 18 kilometers. For, for a vehicle, if he, if he gets the call for emergency to, to, to start his engine and get to the other side, you're looking at 25 minutes at best. A drone is about four to five minutes. The drone is already there. Now, some of these drones that we, 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 we bought now, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not that crazy expensive. It's about 46,000 Rand, right? It's got a thermal camera on it and it has a speaker. So you can stop on top of that guy, you put on your spotlight and you can speak to him through the drone. You can tell him, hey, I'm seeing you get away. Not just that, you, you can pre-plan certain routes for that drone. So on the farm where we live, we live on a farm um, just outside of Standerton. We, we've built a deck on, on the second story where our main bedroom is. So at night, if I hear anything, and I think there might be danger, I send the drone out. I don't go out. And the drone has a pre-planned -pre flight route that it takes with the thermal camera. And, I, and I've, I've pre-planned it because where I think people might be hiding. And it goes and it does that. Not just that, uh, something else which is also interesting is, so we have quite a lot of water tanks on the farm and you don't always know if, if that, that, that tool that measures the depth is always working properly. So I can send the drone out with um, the thermal camera and I can see through the tank how much water is left inside the tank. So I know, is this tank full? Is it not full? Is there something wrong with, 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 with the uh, little instrument that, that measures the levels? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to ask one person who is yet to contribute to just ask a question, an imaginative question. And uh, before I ask uh, Pierce here to conclude, Lindin, would you like to give it a go? Any question? Chanel? My story is Eric has a question. Go ahead, Eric. Yes, it's, it's actually more a, a comment. You know, for, from a security point of view, I'm not sure if any of you have experienced this. When you call the police and you say you have a break in, the police doesn't come immediately. And sometimes they come, they do that for safety reasons. They don't want to get there and meet the crossfire and be in the crossfire. They come hours when they know that the thief, you know, is gone. And if there was scuffling, it's, they're just coming to take a statement. Now, even the policeman can send a drone, you know, uh, and, and say, send it to this address. And the drone gets there and has a look and, 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 and scare if there's any thief still there. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is a very exciting. Chanel, you can I have a question. Yes, I have a question. Um, Peter, 
oftentimes nowadays, I don't know if you spoke about it, but nowadays, especially in the automotive industry, uh, they are moving also towards, you know, fuel cells and the application of fuel cells in other industries. Uh, how does fuel cell uh, feature within the drone uh, technology or sphere? Okay, so fuel cells, uh, I'm not an expert on fuel, fuel cells at this stage, but I can only imagine that it's going to play a much, much bigger uh, role, especially when it comes to transportation of people. Uh, there's a website, and you can, you can take this down. It's a company called Black, Black Fly. Do yourself a favor and go and look at Black Fly. They've built drones that are priced at the same price range as a high-end SUV that can transport a person. It's incredible if you see what they can do with that. I, I just hope I live long enough to own one of those at some stage in my life. Uh, because apart from it transporting you, the possibilities are, are, are great. So our biggest limiting factor is definitely a, a range on batteries. But again, if, if I look at where we were just five years ago, we were at a place where a drone can stay in the air for 12 minutes. It's now 55 minutes on the same model drone. So fuel cells, uh, I think definitely that's the way. They're all already also experimenting with hybrid type uh, systems where you have like a small generator running and then it just charges uh, the battery. So some of those drones is a company, um, I think they're in NACE now called Alti. And their drones, they claim can, can go up to 22 hours, if I'm not mistaken, speaking on the correction, but 22 hours in, in the air. And again, you won't have a human being flying 22 hours with the same level of concentration in a chopper or anything else for whatever reason. But now, while the drone is doing its automated route, you can switch pilots in between. It's an amazing, amazing piece of equipment. Wow, if you're not inspired, then I, I don't know what. PSC, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say any final words that you'd like to say to us as you conclude. So I think this has been a sure. well, well, thank you for the opportunity. L last thing I want to say is, um, I'm not exactly sure where that bridge is, but I saw a photo a few weeks ago, a friend shared it with me, of a, of a bridge that, that was built. Um, and it was incredibly strong to withstand basically any storm. So it, it, was, it, it ran over a, a, a major river in, in that certain country. I think it was Honduras or somewhere. But anyhow, after a huge cyclone came, the bridge still stood, but the river moved. So where the bridge is like this, the river is running on the other side. And if you're not taking this kind of technology into consideration of your business, you might have a really strong structure, which can withstand a lot of storms financially, but you're going to become irrelevant sooner or later. So rather embrace this, don't be scared of it.